Hello, in this um, opening video we're going to have a look at starting Audacity up, um, making sure that the levels of the input levels of your microphone are okay on your computer, making your first test recording and then exporting your recording as an MP3 file. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to make sure that the microphone I'm speaking into is actually set at um, a decent level to be able to record in Audacity. You can do this by going to the start button, choosing control panel, hardware and sound and then sound and this will allow you to see all the recording devices that are plugged into your computer. So your computer can have a few different microphones that might be set on it. If you're using a laptop for example it can have its own internal microphone and you can also use um, external headsets and microphones to plug into it. I'm actually using a USB microphone for this recording because it gives you the best quality but you might find that you're using something that just plugs into the normal headphone jack. If you are doing that you need to make sure that the recording levels are okay. So have a look at your microphone that um, seems to be having an input, Cl select it in the recording um, list, click on properties, go to levels and here you can adjust the input level of a microphone and importantly you can set a microphone boost on your microphone as well. So if you are using a standard normal microphone that just plugs into the standard uh, microphone input on your computer I recommend that you increase the microphone boost before you open Audacity. This might take a little bit of trial and error for your system to get the recording levels right. OK, so I've set the microphone boost and I've clicked OK, but actually in this instance, because I'm using a USB microphone, I'm going to select this one and set this to be the default. OK, when I'm happy with that, I can then go to the Start button and Audacity. If once I start recording, I find that I'm not happy with the sound levels, I can go back to the control panel and try and set them again. OK, when Audacity first opens, we'll see that um, there's a work area here and up here we've got various controls that allow us to record, play our audio back and manipulate it in various ways. The first thing I'm going to do is to make sure it's to do a, a test recording and make sure that the input levels are OK for when I do a real recording. OK, before I do that, I'm going to look at the microphone drop-down list and make sure that it's using the right um, microphone on the system. So in this case I'm going to select the headset microphone and I'm going to press the big red button to start recording and see what the sound levels are like. So I'm just going to do a test recording. You can see that the playhead moves along. When I'm quiet it leaves a nice quiet bit and when I'm speaking it seems to have reasonable sized peaks. So that's a good indication just visually that I'm going to be be getting quite a nice loud recording when I'm speaking and quiet with very little background noise when I'm not speaking. Once I've made a test recording and press stop to stop it I can use the playhead to listen to what my recording sounds like. So I'm just going to do a test recording you can see that the playhead moves along. When I'm quiet that seems to be an okay uh, recording for me I'm quite happy with the the volume levels and that there's no background noise. So I'm going to close this off and now I'm going to make my proper recording by reading a bit of standard blurb that has been provided on the sheet. So press record. It's always good practice by the way just as a little tip when you do start recording to try and leave a few seconds of quiet just at the very start of your recording and this makes it much easier to uh, remove any unwanted background noise. It's just good practice to get into. So we'll start that one again. This piece of audio has been recorded at the analog voice sound into a digital signal. So I've made my recording. I can listen back to it if I want. This piece of audio has been recorded using a head and if I'm happy with that I can save my project and export the audio for, for, for wider dissemination. So to save my project just go file save project and you get a little warning here that tells you okay you can save your project so you can come back and edit this later on but you can't then share the project to online to play it on your mp3 player or, or anything else. So that's okay I'm going to save a project I'm just going to put it on the desktop for now open recording and click save 
and we'll see what that creates. That actually creates two things. We've got the actual project file here, and this can be opened by Audacity and only by Audacity, and we also get an associated folder full of data. And it's this data folder that actually contains the audio recording that I've just made. All of this can only be opened by Audacity, and you need to make sure that you keep these two things together for them to be able to be opened later on. OK, so that's my project saved. Now I want to be able to share this file with others so they can listen to it. So instead of saving the project, I'm going to export this audio. OK, when we choose to export audio in the shareable format, we get a few different file types that we can save it as. So we can save it as a WAV file, which would be a, produce large files that are uncompressed. But in this case, I want to distribute this online, so I'm going to save it as an MP3 file. And then we also get some options around the quality of our MP3. So the higher the bitrate we choose, the larger the file size, but the better the quality. The lower the bitrate, the smaller the file, the easier it is to distribute online or to email to people, but the lower the quality. I'm going to choose about 64 kilobits per second for this, and that's about the quality that the BBC uses for podcasts if you want a, a frame of reference. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to save it again to my desktop. And the final thing that we get to do is to give some metadata or some values to our sound file. And these are the type of things that you would see appearing if you were listening back to this on an iPod, for example. So I'm going to give it an artist name so everyone knows who's made this great recording. Um, I'll give it a year as well. Click OK. And then on the desktop is a new standalone audio file that I can double click and it'll just play in Windows Media Player or, or whatever your preferred media player is. This piece of audio has been recorded using a headphone and a microphone setup that is plugged into the computer's sound card.